Welcome back to DXB Today, where we are focused on all things mental health well-being in the workplace. We're going to have top experts right here on the sofa telling us why it is transforming and why it's important now more than ever. So here's what's coming up. Employee first aid training with Blue Sky Thinking Group. They're going to be here showing us how to save lives in the workplace. Yeah, plus we've got one of our favorite performers who's going to be right here performing for us on the show. We've got a pretty packed show, guys, uh, and mental health well-being in the workplace, something that we've spoken about before on the show, but so important now more than ever, Faris. Yeah, I think a lot of people are considering it really, really important, uh, especially the younger people, the Gen Zers. Mm. They're so they put such an emphasis on work-life balance that I think is going to get to the point where companies have to, whether or not they want to, make sure that their employees are happy. Definitely. I think this is going to be a very educational show for me. Obviously, learning more about wellness, especially wellness in the workplace. And of course, we've got our financial coach coming on the show. And I definitely need help when it comes to my finances because spending is all I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll definitely be finding out more. And listen, we need the experts right here on the sofa, don't we? That's right. Luckily, we got them. Our guest co-host is going to be here very, very soon. But who on earth is it? Hi, I'm Scott Armstrong, the founder of Mental and the Mental Awards 2023, and I'll see you in the studio shortly. Scott will be right here in just a second, but before that, Lane went down to check out first aid training and health assessment session with the Blue Sky Thinking Group to find out how these programs can benefit well-being in the workplace. So let's take a look. You know, the majority of our time in life is spent at work. So it's important to be happy and safe. So I've come to the Blue Sky Thinking Group, which is an organization who deal with the complete wellness in the workplace. So let's find out a bit more. So wellness in the work is a very important thing. I've discovered being here that this is absolutely incredible and crucial to so many different people. So how did it come together? And um, tell me a bit more about what you actually do here. Yeah, absolutely. So we're at BSTG. We're a thriving culture and wellness company. Um, we've got three different companies underneath us. So all elements of the business really combine together to develop a holistic wellness offering. When people are happy, they perform better, surprisingly. Yeah, simple as that. So Kerry, tell me about Safe Hands. So Safe Hands initially began as a first aid training company, which we still currently do now, and you've seen today. And we also provide corporate wellness programs for our clients as well. So those are an annual program. And what we do there is we support by education, challenges and campaigns. So to make it bespoke, we start with an assessment period, which is a health screening, but also a health survey so that we really hear the heart of the business in terms of their people. So how do people perceive their health? What are their goals and where do they want to get to? Brilliant. So I'm in safe hands and it feels fantastic to be here. <laughs> so Kerry, what would you say the basic tips of first aid training that employees need to know? So we do a full six hour course where we obviously cover a lot of scenarios and situations. However, those main basics that we believe everybody needs to know are your CPR, uh, methods that you saw earlier today, so how to go through that across a range of ages, right from zero up to adults. So Sarah, what would you say is the responsibility to businesses when it comes to corporate wellness? So I think it's a two-way approach. I think the employees obviously have a responsibility for their own happiness and wellness, but then employers, particularly within this region, where there isn't as much of a support structure, with our programs, we design them looking at the whole human. So we look at the person and making sure that they can turn up to work presenting them whole, their whole selves. Well, it's quite a scary thing to hear, isn't it? Most of our time is spent in the workplace, so it is right that we learn how to make it a very positive space for us to be. And today's guest co-host is going to tell us how we can do that. He is the founder of an advocacy platform with a mission to tackle the stigma of mental health, an award-winning journalist, and of course, a communication strategist. He is here to find solutions to employee wellbeing challenges in the workplace. Please welcome Scott Armstrong. Scott, welcome back to the show. Lovely to be here again. Oh, it's great in, to on see your, you. on the First time on your sofa as well. Uh, it's comfortable, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, I knew you'd love it. Um, Scott, I mean, so much to talk about today, and I'm so glad we're kind of revisiting the topic with you as well, because 
I mean, mental health in the workplace, I feel like everyone knows that it's such an important topic. How do you think it's kind of developed over even the last year, specifically here in Dubai? Well, it's fascinating that the conversation is getting louder and louder. Um, and what we're beginning to find out is what works, but also what doesn't work as well. But it's really good to see that companies are embracing this. Um, we launched recently the Mental Awards, um, which is designed to hero individuals, in initiatives and companies. And we had a great response. So it was great to see that it was actually on so many people's agenda. So yeah, definitely the noise is getting louder. And now I think we're beginning to finesse the conversation about, okay, what's tick box? And what actually really works? So Scott, can you tell us a little bit about the Mental Awards? Who are they targeting? What are they for? What are we awarding in spe <laughs> specifically? <laughs> well, we um, set up the awards with an independent panel of judges. We've got some amazing judges from Paralympians, international athletes, uh, government health experts. And these were open to individuals who have overcome uh, challenges to succeed, for people who are leading the way, um, being advocates for mental health, but then also for companies to dive into what they're actually doing to make lives better for their employees. And we went cross industries from energy to education, you know, hospitality, to engineering. Are we allowed to ask for specific companies in these fields? Like, who we've, have you got involved? Uh, and we were delighted because this is obviously the first edition, but we've had big names such as ASICS, the global sports company. We've got Deloitte in there. We've got Cigna, the global healthcare you know, uh, insurance provider. So we've got some really big names in Chalhoub in the re retail, uh, retail sector. So we've got about 26 winners to award on the night. Um, and it's going to be a big night, black tie, Gala, because actually we also want to challenge that kind of image of what mental health is. You know, it should be a conversation like this in a bright studio on a on a, on a comfortable sofa. You know, it should look good because it's part of all of our lives. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one thing that springs to mind is over the last, I would say, five to ten years, you've seen a lot of companies and brands get on board with making sure they've got that green sustainability yeah. tick. Uh, do you think we're moving towards the space of getting a mental health tick next to these I, I definitely think we will, and that's a really good business idea. No, I mean, it's an interesting <laughs> one as well, because we, we've gone from green sustainability and then we have green washing. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're getting to that point where companies, some companies are being accused of well washing. Are they just going through the motions? In some respects, that's almost a positive thing because that wasn't even companies weren't even trying to make that effort that sort of five years ago. So now I think it's just we're on this road of evolution, which is like, okay, what's genuine? What is working? What isn't working? And what we're often finding actually is that companies can invest everything in all sorts of different initiatives, but if the underlying culture of the company isn't healthy, if people in the company don't feel psychologically safe then it's like the pool table in the middle of the room that nobody dare play on. Well, I was going to ask, is well-being productive? Massively so. I can tell you what isn't productive is disengaged employees. That costs the UE alone $1.25 million an hour. It's like $10.3 billion a year. We've actually got this really scary clock that ticks up that we give to, to, to CEOs that shows the real-time money they're losing. So disengaged employees are costing the economy a lot of money. On the flip side, there's a number of different studies and it doesn't matter which research house you talk to. The return on investment, my favorite figure, because that was from a study of studies, they examined the average return on investment from 100 different studies and they came up with 364% return on investment. Wow. I, I don't know any cryptos that are offering that right now. <laughs> So do you think people in the UAE are being overworked and what does that mean like for the workplace as well? I mean, we've got burnout rates. I, 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 let's put this into context. We know the UAE is absolutely amazing. Um, but when we come to the workplace, um, we have the Cigna and they've actually evolved some research they did. They used to do what's called the Wellbeing 360 research. And uh, over a year ago, uh, burnout was at 98%. They've just released their vitality report, um, which is kind of the evolution of that research. And the global statistics, we haven't seen the local statistics yet, but still 94% of people suffering from burnout. So, and stress, globally stress has gone down from 82% to 80%. <laughs> I so find that hard massive. to believe, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I uh, live I mean, off stress. You, you talk <laughs> about overwork, there's another really interesting statistic which is they've teased it out from the Middle East, but if you're in Europe, 
about 16% of people are working overtime, working beyond office hours. In the Middle East, that's all more than double. It's like 32% plus. I think there was one report that put us at the third hardest working nation on the planet. I'm not sure Malta and Bhutan are working harder than we are, <laughs> but, uh, but apparently they do some long hours as well there. All right, well, Scott, I just did, I did want to ask, because we know a lot of the overworking, a lot of the burnout comes from the employer, comes from the expectations. There's a lot of people who do it to themselves. Yeah. I mean, like, look at Nimi Meta. Yeah. People who work too hard, what advice do you have for them? Uh, relax, and I think also, I'm, look, I've been there, and it, and I've been on a journey over the past few years, like with my own mental health. Imposter syndrome drives us really, really hard. And I've had that most of my life. I've been waiting to be found out all the time. Um, I think it's difficult in this part of the world. We have, you know, in a lot of companies, there's, there's still an old fashioned hierarchical leaderships in these companies that still have to go on their own journey to meet employees. And they also have to go on their own journey within themselves to become happier individuals. But yeah, we, we need to try and a step away from fear as a motivation and more as purpose and belonging um, within a team as a motivation for people to turn up at work and then we begin to change the dynamic where people are all like one team as opposed to I'm turning up, we've, we've been on the show before talking about the Sunday scaries. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh, the absolute fear that people get. It's a yeah. physical symptom, isn't it? As it well, is, on a it Sunday. absolutely is, yeah. Mm, it's terrifying. Well, okay, we're going to welcome some more well-being experts onto the show. Let's Brilliant. take a little break. But before that, let's have a little sneak peek at the performer we're going to have a little bit later on on the show. Hi, my name is Sean. I'm from the United States. I, I've been living here in Dubai since 2017, and I do music for a living. After the break, we're going to find out how CEOs and high performers manage their stress with a clinical psychologist. So stick with us. <laughs> 